Hey guys, I love being a plant parent, although I have to admit it's really hard not to have favorites. Basically, these are the essential tools and equipment that I can't live without and neither can my plants really either. I'm going to be sharing the must-have tools that make plant parenting easy as pie. And honestly, as proud plant parents, we should really have all of these tools uh, to really care for our plants. These tools are in no particular order and this video isn't sponsored, so I'm really gonna be sharing the tools that actually truly work for me and my plants. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler and if you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. So beyond just sharing these tools, I'm really gonna go through and explain the benefits of each one, how I use them, and any pro tips I might have as well. Most of these are daily use. Some I do use less frequently, but all are essential to plant parenting. All right, let's jump right into these must have items. The first tool I wanna to share with you guys is a hygrometer. Now, if you live somewhere with varying seasons, then that basically means that the humidity levels can change drastically from the winter months to the summer months. Some houseplants, humidity really isn't an issue, but for others, it can really be a thing. For example, fiddle leaf figs, some Hoya ferns even, really have some specific or can have some really specific humidity needs. By using a hygrometer and placing it right beside those plants in question, really does take the guessing out of the whole equation and honestly makes your job super simple. For me and where I'm located, I find that humidity is a relatively easy to manage in the summer months and it's a little bit more challenging in the winter time. So really the hygrometer in terms of importance and frequency of use, I would have to say is right up there somewhere at the top of my list. The best part is these are found easily online and can and retail for anywhere from five to ten dollars so they're pretty inexpensive and they are going to make all the difference for your humidity loving plants the next tool i'm going to share with you guys is the light ph and soil moisture uh, meter now these are also easily found online and can retail from anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars so they're also pretty affordable now full disclosure i don't use this tool very frequently and i would expect uh, you know, other experienced plant parents to feel similarly. However, if you have a problem child or you are trying to troubleshoot, you know something has gone wrong, but you just can't figure it out. Having one of these tools can become a lifesaver, quite literally. So your money really isn't going to waste by picking one of these meters up especially if you get one that is multifunctional like this. So obviously these tools and these meters will give you a readout on how much or how little light your plant is receiving, um, how much moisture or what, how much water is in the soil as well as the pH level of the soil mix as well. So for example, if you know you are somebody who tends to overwater or even underwater for that matter, then having one of these tools can actually be pretty useful because again, it really takes all of the guessing out and it gives you that information that you need to know. There is, however, one really important pro tip that you need to know about these tools. Don't leave these in the pot once you've finished using them. I guess what I'm trying to say is you can't keep these permanently in the soil in the pot for your plant because uh, what you need to do is once you've finished using it, you need to remove it and give it the prongs uh, a quick wipe down um, and just give them a quick clean. If you leave this in your pot, in the plant, 
It might be kind of convenient because then you can check the readout and etc. But what's going to happen is these metal prongs on the bottom of the tool will actually start to corrode and then the tool will not really work after that. So to keep this working for as long as possible, you know, you can insert the prongs into the soil, get the readout for get the information you need, and then you need to remove it and then clean those prongs uh, with a, you know, damp um, towel or whatever you have, um, but just don't leave it in the pot. All right, moving right along. The next thing I have is honestly pretty cool, pretty amazing. It's this battery um, operated and digital watering can and mister. Okay, so I will admit this is a little bit on the indulgent side. These do retail anywhere from around the $30 to $40 mark. Now, misting plants can be a big no-no, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't need a mister. So why do you need a mister if you're not going to be using it to mist your plants, you're probably asking yourself? Well, if you have or use moss poles, or have sphagnum moss, then a mister can be quite important actually. So for example, for my mounted, well-mounted staghorn ferns and my moss poles that I've made all using sphagnum moss, if that sphagnum moss dries out, then it won't do what you want it to do, which is retain moisture. So instead of having to soak your moss poles or give your sphagnum moss a bath, by having a mister and misting that sphagnum moss on a daily basis can really encourage that uh, moss to retain its moisture and therefore doing what you want it to do. And it just makes my life way easier. This way it will do a better job at retaining its moisture. To really show me some love, hit the bell for alerts and notifications for future content. Okay, so you might not like what I have to say next, but I'm just gonna come out and say it. You are a bad, naughty, naughty plant parent if you use potting soil mix for all of your house plants. Now, this actually drives me pretty crazy because one of the biggest problems I think a lot of people um, can have is if they're not using the correct soil mix for their plant. Now, the word soil is kind of confusing in a way because we're kind of trained to think that dirt and soil actually mean the same thing. Soil really just means the stuff that the plant's roots are sitting in. Anyways, that could really be a whole video on its own. All I really will say is that responsible plant parents will have on hand or should have um, some peat moss, sphagnum moss, cocoa coir, perlite, and some bark on hand in stock, um, basically at all times to be able to create the different soil mixes that work for the various types of house plants that we typically have. And a couple more items that I'm not gonna elaborate on too much. You should probably also have on hand some stakes and some of the necessary materials to make some moss poles as well. Now, another tool I wanna mention really quickly is a pair of shears. Now, the best advice I can give on these is to give them a wipe down with an alcohol wipe or something that's gonna disinfect them after each use. Now, there's two reasons for this. The first reason is for us humans. Now, we all know that some of these plants can be poisonous or have poisonous sap or that kind of thing. So if you've used these and you're not disinfecting them afterwards, they could that could potentially transfer uh, somewhere and do us harm. So that's the first reason why it's really important to disinfect your shears afterwards. The second reason is for the plants. Now, we disinfect our shears because we don't wanna transfer or infect any of our plants or anything that the shears are touching. All right, so there are just a few more items on my list and these are actually the most important items of them all. If you're interested in more content like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. Okay, my top two last tools are, the first is neem oil. Now, this is a really important product 
for a couple of reasons. The first is when you have a lot of plants and you are continuing to purchase new plants, when you bring, when I bring new plants home, I isolate them, I keep them separate, and I may treat them just as a precaution um, with some neem oil because the last thing I wanna do is bring um, a plant into my home that, it, that has some sort of pest on it that could eventually spread or impact all of my other plants. Um, now, the other reason is obviously if you do realize or you kind of, you know, get to a point where you have some sort of pest issue like mealybugs or spider mites, having neem oil um, on hand and in stock will enable you to um, act really quickly and treat uh, the problem super effectively. Last, but definitely not least, is a humidifier. Now, I actually have multiple humidifiers and there are different types of humidifiers. Uh, one type that I have is sort of a mist-free humidifier. And basically these uh, humidifiers, how they work is they have um, a vessel of water and there's a fan that just kind of works to take that evaporated water and that moisture and just move it up and throughout the space. Um, and the other type of popular humidifier is a mist or a humidifier that, that you know, distributes kind of a mist of uh, humidity or moisture into the air. And those are also super effective. Now this is kind of coming full circle because I started with the hygrometer. So by having a hygrometer uh, in conjunction with your humidifier or humidifiers, you can really get an idea as to the humidity levels. For me specifically in the winter, uh, one humidifier isn't enough. And I know that because my um, hygrometer tells me what the humidity levels are. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video to be useful. Oh yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Miss you guys already, until the next one.